Hey guys, what's up? So this video is brought to you by Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. If you guys are trying to get into software development, iOS development, software QA, and other stuff, check out the link in the description tab below. They are offering courses. Um, you can actually live on campus over there. They are hooked up with employers around the country, um, around the, the world really, and they're going to help you try to find your first job in this industry. So uh, make sure you give them a look, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, and the link is in the description tab below. Hey guys, what's up? All right. All right, so in this video, what we're talking about is the two most important traits that you need to have as a developer. And I've actually, um, somebody just made a comment earlier and I, I really thought about it and the comment r rang true and like I thought about it and I said, you know what? That is the single most important trait. But then I thought, you know what? There's actually one more that goes along with that. So really there's, on there's only two, I think, that it can really boil down to. And, and, and I have to explain why that is, but uh, I really think that that programming, you know, in, in a sense, like, you know, people, different YouTubers, they'll tell you, oh, you want to do game development. So go ahead and, and spend time, um, you know, learning linear algebra and, you know, C++ or something like that. And it's like, you're going to steer people down the wrong direction as like new beginner developers. There's no reason, that, like, you don't have to learn linear algebra to be a programmer. And like, you probably shouldn't start with that. If, if even if you wanted to do game development, you probably shouldn't start with that, assuming you don't have that knowledge under your belt already. Um, so these two traits that I'm going to talk about, um, it goes beyond, you know, the, the core fundamentals that we, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, um, we're constantly de dealing with different things and there's different mathematical computations, whether it's like, um, if I said, Hey, you have to master Boolean logic interpolation, and uh, lambda calculus and maybe linear algebra or something like that, I would be doing, I think, a disservice. Um, now, linear algebra is probably the outlier there because you're going to deal with that a lot on, and like in game development. Uh, but when it comes to the other ones, like you know, string interpolation or like, um, like I said, Boolean logic or something like that, or even lambda calculus with anonymous functions. I mean, they're all mathematical terms, but you're going to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis, and like, it really has nothing to do with whether or not you're a good enough developer. I mean. Let me go ahead and, and just state the two most obvious traits. And it's really not obvious, I guess, maybe to some people, but for me, it just seems so obvious, but uh, th these are the two. All right, so the single biggest attribute to being a programmer is having the ability to learn and enjoying learning. Um, I can't stress that enough. I've had so much enjoyment out of learning how to program. Um, when I made websites or I got a database connection to work or a SQL query to work, like there's been times like I could jump out of my skin with excitement because I'm like, oh, I, I figured it out. And like now I know that like I, I'm just everything else is going to fall in line. Um, unfortunately, it's never that it's never that way because um, we're always challenged with learning something new. The landscape of programming changes all the time. Um, you look at the JavaScript community right now, um, JavaScript doesn't look anything like what it did when I first got started programming. Uh, and, and I've only been doing this 10 years. So you're looking at like major, major changes. And every once in a while, like I look at like a new developer that comes in um, and I can see that they're like, they're doing a great job. And, 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 and sometimes people need to know um, when that junior comes in, you know, they're, they're out of college or whatever, and then, you know, they're programming and they're making seniors look bad or like they're, you know, they're looking really good basically. Um, in many cases, like you look at some of these, like these famous programmers that dropped out of college and became rich and things like that. Um, a lot of those guys, you know, they got started when programming was first getting started. I mean, like they, they were, you know, like personal computers, like Bill Gates and stuff like that. Um, like the you know, personal computers were just getting started. So like not everybody had them there. There wasn't as much competition. Um, but there wasn't as much demand either. So like there's clearly more demand right now than there is like supply for IT programmers. But um, my, I guess my point is back then, uh, it wasn't the same landscape, like obviously. So, so my point is that the, the younger person can come in, they can really make themselves look good because they're dealing with a new landscape. So w whether you're a senior developer, a, a junior developer, you're always going to have to deal with this changing landscape that is programming. Um, and, and the people that are able to adapt to it, like the juniors that are able to jump in to say React or ES6 or something like that, like right now, um, if they're able to jump in and hit the ground running, most likely they're going to be able to transition into something else too. So like when React is not the new hotness, not ES6, and we're doing ES8 and, 
and God knows what, like they're probably going to be able to adapt to that as well. And even if they tried to jump into like mobile development or game development, they could probably figure that out as well. But that is because they can self learn um, and they don't get dragged down by the next principle that I'm going to talk about. Also, um, keep in mind, people like Bill Gates, like when they got into the personal computer market, like say, you know, they're 18, they're 20 years old, they're just getting into it. Um, everybody thinks, oh, like you, they didn't just pick it up right then and there. Like they had been toying with this stuff um, because of who their parents were and because of like the, the resources that they had access to. Uh, but they were toying around with actual coding when they were like eight and nine years old. I'm teaching my son how to program. He, um, when I first started teaching my son Python, he was probably eight or maybe seven or eight, maybe earlier. I'm not sure, but... Um, and then like my daughter's learning programming, but like it's the same thing with those other developers too. So even the, 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 the college dropouts, in many cases, those guys had, you know, 12 years under their belt because they had been doing it, you know, ever since they were really young. Um, and I can't imagine the advantage that you would have if like you were like literally jumping in, uh, in elementary school level. So in a way, I guess like I, I'm curious whether or not like they were, they, I'm sure that they were challenged with the same things. And like no matter what, whether or not, whether you're Bill Gates and like you're just getting started with DOS programming or something like that, or you're jumping in right now with, uh, with WebGL or maybe, you know, Webpack and Babel and all that stuff, whatever the landscape is right now, it, it's not going to stay. So like it's always going to change. Um, and as soon as you're able to grasp the overall programming concepts, like so the object oriented principles, the design patterns like um, data extraction and, and, and um, just data structures all together like you're going to be well on your way to be, being able to do this job but that's only a small portion of what we have to do so if somebody told you hey you need to master regular expressions or you need to master this or that or whatever um, it's not going to happen overnight like it's just it's, it's always going to be this learning process and, and it should be like the next challenge in front of you that you're focused on um, and whether that, you know, most of the time that challenge that's in front of us is whatever sort of, you know, company that we're working for and the business problem that we're trying to solve, that's usually the problem that's set out in front of us. So being able to learn. So I was a plumber. I was a truck driver. I mean, I installed appliances like uh, refrigerators and washing machines and all this stuff. Um, I, I've done it all. You guys actually saw on my video, I was installing a dishwasher. One of the reasons why I knew how to do that was because I actually used to get paid to do that. But um uh, it's still something you, you learn, but like I learned that I learned how to do that 15 to 20 years ago. And it stuck with me all this time, not 20. I'm not that old, but anyway, 15 years ago or roughly, um, it stuck with me all that time. And the reason why is because installing a dishwasher doesn't change like every three weeks. Um, but programming does. And the challenges that you have to face as a programmer it's always something new as a developer in a professional environment uh, for a long time now, I can say that I've never had the same routine tasks set out in front of me uh, day in and day out. And if I did, I'd be like posting to a different job or another team or something like that. Like that, like there is no way that like one of the, the fun things about being a programmer is that we always have some new thing to solve. Like, I mean, um, but the problem with that, and, and it's a major problem, is that life can can really kick your ass sometimes. So like, you could have a death in the family. You could have a, um, a you know s some sort of sick family member. You could be sick. Like, um, you could be going through like a divorce. Or, like, who the hell knows what it is that you're dealing with? Um, but when you're under circumstances like that, unfortunately, you know, different from accounting or even in many cases like the medical practice where things are kind of laid out in front of you through tried and true practices and through trial and error and tests and things like that. Um, with programming, the landscape changes all the time. So the job title itself doesn't. And no matter what sort of stresses you're under in life or whatever, it's not like plumbing where I'm just having to figure out how to run pipes through a house. You know, in many cases, it's not a house at all. It's a submarine or it's, it's something, yeah, underwater or in the sky. Like who the hell knows? So if anything I said scares junior developers or people that are trying to get into the IT industry and they're like worried about it, if anything, I'd be worried about the people that tell you to learn like Boolean logic and, and uh, linear algebra and stuff like that before you jump into gaming. Like if anything, jump into Unity Engine, jump into it as quickly as possible and start coding with C Sharp if you want to be a game developer. Uh, if you want to be a mobile developer, like I said, jump into uh, something like Java uh, on the Android or you're going to use Swift with Apple. But just jump right into it. Um, jump right into it and start building stuff and, and build something that, that um, not necessarily you want to build, but build something that is feasible. You got to keep the scope in check. Like if you're trying to 
if you're trying to like conquer the world, you're, you're just not going to be able to do it. So anyway, like learning is always something that you have to do as a developer. You're going to have to learn how to have social skills. You're going to have to learn how to write letters. You're going to have to learn how to be business professional, how to interview. You're going to have to learn how to uh, schmooze people sometimes. Like you have to be a sale, salesman as a developer sometimes to sell your technology, sell your ideas. Uh, in many cases, I've seen developers that can't code for shit, but they're great salesmen uh, and they still get into management positions and things like that because of it. So um, just like there's all kinds of different avenues that you can go down with IT. But the, the bottom line is if you can learn um, and you can adapt to the changing landscape, then you're going to be you're going to be golden. So like enjoy learning. Make sure you get satisfaction out of learning and accomplishing something that may may have. Uh, had you stumped for days or maybe hours or whatever, if you don't get satisfaction out of something like that, I would, I would, I would strongly caution people uh, about being de a developer because I can tell you that like, like when I've had to deal with personal issues, there's times that you're going to go into work and you have to learn something new and you're going to be motivated first thing in the morning. You're going to drink your coffee and you're like, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to study up on this. I'm going to write this and that. And like, and that day is going to kick your ass. Like you're going to get in there and you're going to be like, damn, I can't figure out shit. Why? Oh, cause I'm dealing with a divorce. Oh, I'm dealing with a sick child. I'm dealing with this or that, that like, that is the unfortunate reality of being a developer though, because Unlike being a plumber, like where I could go in and be like, you know, fuck it. I can just solder some pipes. I know how to do that. Like I'm just soldering some pipes. Code is not that way. Just because you know how to do a for loop doesn't mean that you can just do for loops everywhere. So that brings me to my next biggest tip. And this is even bigger than the last one, only because these fuckers out there will try to tell you um, you can't do it. You'll try to tell yourself. Um, you're going to have this imposter syndrome. You're going to like, especially self-taught developers, even people going into computer science. I for sure would have failed a computer science course in college. Absolutely. Like I, I had a hard time even going to college. Like I, I recognize even at the time, like I'd rather be doing other shit. Like I was like, I was busy. Like I dropped, I didn't drop out of school. I, I actually went to night school. Like it was hard, but I, I finished high school last second, graduated at 17, went into college at 17. Uh, went to a university and actually dropped out within like uh, two semesters or so. And that's when I got into the blue collar field. Uh, and then eventually I went back to, to school to be, uh, to get into computer science again and then uh, switched to business. And uh, I don't regret that actually because I've, I've had a business since 2011. It's fun. Um, but how do I have that? Because I learn, I learn new things all the time. I do all my own taxes. I do everything. Like I, I install my own dishwasher. Like I, I do my own stuff if I can, if I can do it. And I, because I'm a learner, I, I know I, I've done major repairs on my car because I've taken the initiative to take pictures before and after, uh, looking online, talking to people through thread forums. Like the information is out there. You could empower yourself so much with the internet. I've done it so much. Um, I don't even want to brag or anything about the money that I've made, but literally I've made tons of money uh, and I say tons of money and it's tons of money to a lot of people and they're really not a tons of money. It's not like I'm rich or anything, but I've made money, um, out of like, just out of nothing. And, and, and the IT world has provided that like literally I, I made nothing or I had nothing. And then I made lots like from nothing like, and, and, um, and that's amazing. But how did I do that? It's because I learned how to do it. I, I learned the things that I was doing that didn't work. And I learned the things that I was doing that did work. And so, so basically that is it. You, you have to not doubt yourself. You, you have to know that you're going to run into situations where the day, like I said, is going to kick your ass. You're going to go from feeling like you're on top of the world when you're solving problems and things are going well to feeling like you don't belong because you can't figure out some basic shit that like uh, junior developers are working on. Um, it's, there's a bigger, there's a bigger thing at play there. Like I said, there, there, there's the personal life. There's the fact that everybody learns at a different pace, but the, it doesn't matter if you're a fast learner or a slow learner. There are people that learn things quickly. And then there are people that learn things slower. Um, and then sometimes those people that learn things slower, they have more of a grasp and a larger concept of it. And they're able to do more with that knowledge. So it is really, um, there, there is no tried and true formula to say, oh, if you can't do simple mathematics, like you're going to be a terrible developer forever. Like there's still other avenues for you in IT. Like even if you didn't want to be a, a programmer, even if like you really couldn't wrap your head around, you know, simple things like uh, changing variables. And like, I, I can't imagine like how somebody wouldn't, like if you have the ability to learn, then 
And, and we all do, obviously. Um, but I suppose that there is some sort of threshold of learning there. Um, but that is the, the, the problem, I think, is because there's going to be there, – there were times when I was a self-taught developer where literally like when I, I – on this channel, I talked about this Android development job. I had been programming for like two years. Uh, and even though I wasn't a Java developer, I went to this Android position for a senior Java developer. And it was like they, you know, they had me build an app and all this stuff, and I built the app. I went in there, and then like it was like this three-person roundtable interview. And basically, the first thing they were kind of talking about was the fact that I didn't have a degree. Um, I didn't have any like you know, professional background of Java development and things like that. And then they didn't even look at my app that I had created for them. Um, so clearly, like I, I'm better off not working for for somebody like that. But um, you know, that is um, like th that is the, the realities. I think. <clears throat> You know, those are, so that is, you know, those are the unfortunate realities in life that, that we all deal with. And um, those simple things, I remember that was like a real kick in the ass at the time because I was really thinking, like, I really have to give this up because what I did is I called out of work, um, you know, and I took a day off, actually. I took an entire day off because I had an interview in D.C. and it was like a long thing and I was trying to get prepared and I had been building this app for several weeks before that and stuff like that. And I didn't know Java, so I was like crushing it, just trying to learn like every night, working full time. Uh, two kids, wife, and just trying to crush it so that I can like you know build this app. And it, I was pulling my hair out with frustration. Um, none of that was necessary. I shouldn't have put myself through that. Uh, but for me, I'm the kind of person that um, the self doubt did creep in after that. And I was like, maybe I should give up development. I even told my boss, like my boss who I was working for, one of the best ladies I've ever worked with, and and to this day will be a lifelong friend of mine. Um, if she's ever watching, I'm sure she knows who she is, but, um, you know, she was the one who actually was like, no, absolutely not. This is something that you've wanted to do. You've been working very hard at it, blah, blah, blah. you know, like she completely, cause I had called her immediately after an inter interview and I was like, I can't believe I called out and blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, I took off a day because I was going to try to do this and I've been working on it for so long. And, um, and I'm not talking about the Android app. I'm talking about two years uh, of working. Uh, at home and having websites and even having a business at, at that point um, and then going in and just being embarrassed like that. So for me, I could have used that experience as, as somebody like, oh, you're not going to be able to, to belong in this industry. But in fact, uh, fuck that. You know, like I took that as a chip on my shoulder. I dug a further chip in the shoulder. Like this motherfucker is all chipped in right here. Like, uh, but yeah, so I, I came from nothing. And the two things that you need to be a developer are learning how to code, just enjoying learning. Um, I can tell you firsthand, the two things you need to do is you need to have the ability to learn, you need to enjoy learning, you need to enjoy, uh, and, and you don't have to enjoy learning all the time, nobody does. Like there, There's gonna be times where life is a real bitch and you don't like to learn, but um, you do have to learn almost on a daily basis as a software developer. You're never doing the same thing over and over again. It's not like any other field. Um, and and then, and then, and to not self-doubt yourself, not to let the critics uh, creep in, not to let other arrogant motherfuckers creep in. Like, um, you, you don't, you don't need any of that. Um, you keep working at it, you'll be fine, though.